In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a fake whip pan transition right inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and you've got two video clips sitting on your timeline, if we have a look at my timeline, you can see I've got this clip here and then I've got this clip here. So I'm gonna transition from this first clip into this second clip. So the first thing for you to do is to get your two clips on the timeline and make sure they are sitting right next to each other like so. So now we're just going to select that first video clip. We'll scroll towards the very end, so at the very, very end, and then we'll go back on ourselves 10 frames. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll create a brand new keyframe on the position. So we'll select this stopwatch icon or the toggle animation button. Then we'll go nine frames to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The reason why we don't do the 10 is because if we do the 10, it flicks over into the next clip and we can't see what we're doing. So we'll do nine, we'll move it over and then we'll move the keyframe over after. So we'll whip over to the right. So we'll move the position over to the right to make this appear off screen. So about there. Now we'll just zoom in and like I said, we're gonna move over one frame and we'll move that keyframe over to the right. So that is 10 keyframes whipping off. There we go. So now we're gonna to go to that first keyframe like so. We're just going to hover over there. We're gonna drag this first video clip up onto video layer two. We're gonna grab that second video clip and we'll move that to this cursor. Now on this second video clip, we're gonna go 10 frames to the right. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Create a brand new keyframe on the position. We'll go to the very beginning of that clip and we'll turn off video layer two. Then we'll just move the position of this second clip over to the left. So we're just gonna make sure this is slightly off screen. There you go, it's completely off there. And then we can turn video layer two back on. So if we play this back, you can see we've got this very basic whip transition happening. The problem is though, it's not quite quick enough for my liking. I wanna speed this up a touch. So rather than doing a 10 keyframe animation, let's do a seven. So we'll go to the video clip on video layer two. We'll scroll to those keyframes there. We'll go to that first keyframe We'll go to the right by three keyframes. So we'll go one, two, three, and move this keyframe over to the cursor. Now we'll go over to the second video clip, the one on video layer one. We'll move everything over to the right. And then I'm just gonna to go to that last keyframe. We'll go back in time by three. So we'll go one, two, three frames and pull that keyframe over to the cursor. So when we play this back, we've got this much quicker whip transition happening. And that is much better. The problem is though, you can see this little black sliver here. So in order to get rid of that, we're just going to select both of those videos. We'll drag them up to one video layer. We're going to take this second video clip, hold option on the keyboard and drag this down to make a copy. Of course, if that doesn't work, you can always do the traditional right click, copy, paste, move that over and drag that under like so. Now on this second video clip, we're just going to make a cut. So we'll press C and make a cut at the end of this first clip. We'll delete that part there and then we'll just increase the scale. So essentially what we've done is we've just copied the second clip. We just increase the scale and by increasing the scale, it means it's filled in this gap here. And if we play this back, you can see that looks a lot better. We haven't got this black line distracting us. Now, of course, if we were doing this whip pan transition in the camera in real life, there would be a lot of motion blur generated from the movement. So we are going to recreate that motion blur with the directional blur plugin. So we'll go into effects and search for blur, B-L-U-R, and we'll drop directional blur onto that first clip. And as you can see, it hasn't really done anything and that's because the values are still zero. So we'll make the direction 90 degrees. And if we increase the blur length, you can see that he's adding that direction of blur effect onto the transition. So we're just going to scroll to the end of this transition. So the end of the transition is here. I'll select this clip here, go blur length. We'll go 100%, create a brand new keyframe on the blur length. So we'll select the toggle watch icon, go back to the beginning of that, and we'll pull this down to 0%. So as you can see, we're getting this directional blur effect happening as it's transitioning off. And then we'll do the same thing for the second video clip, but we'll do it in reverse. So we'll drop directional blur onto the second clip. We'll change the direction to 90 degrees. 
we'll go to the very beginning of this second clip. We'll pull the blur length up to 100, create a brand new keyframe on the stopwatch icon, and then we'll go to the end of that movement and change the blur length down to zero. So if we play this back, you can see that is looking a lot better. And then of course, if we select everything on the timeline, we'll right click, select nest, press OK on this nested sequence. We'll go back into directional blur. We'll scroll to the point at the start of the transition. We'll go back one frame, create a brand new keyframe on blur length. We'll scroll to the end of the transition, create a brand new keyframe on blur length. Then we'll go in between those two points and then we'll increase the blur length up to around 40% and change the direction to 90 degrees. And when we play this back, you can see we've got this really awesome whip pan transition completely created inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, of course, this digital whip pan is going to be nowhere near as good as an actual practical whip pan transition filmed on set. So if you wanted to do a whip pan, then I would definitely recommend preparing that on the day and making sure you do shoot that on set. But if you wanted to add a little transition into the edit and you forgot to shoot that transition, then this is a quick workaround on that specific effect. So there you go. That is how you do this specific effect right inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. I really appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.